episode 1.8, The Aftermath. Back at the research center, Christine shows the bag of shards to Nathaniel, and he takes them and runs the back of the machine. I see, said Nathaniel. The computer says the shards are from artificial beings and on a pseudo. What are pseudo? the group asked. Pseudo are exactly the opposite of humans, replied Nathaniel. Whereas humans are real, authentic beings, pseudo are merely blood clones extracted from the blood samples of people with special abilities. In the past, I've studied the recent activities involving the Maborg and their artificial creatures. Their group, the Maborg, which means blessed or the anointed ones, is basically an organization of monsters that serves as a legal hitman for the black market. This may sound weird to you all, but would you believe me if I told you there's probably not a single human in the Maborg? Not just that. The joint services agency and the Maborg are the exact opposite of each other. Whereas JC stops the bad guys by turning them in, the Maborg kills people and discriminates for problems because they're trained assassins. I should also add that Stido makes excellent hitmen because the reason why no one is able to track down Stido is because they don't leave behind the uh, fingerprints and it makes the scheme of crime look like something accident. Not only that, when we take mutants to our center, we do everything in our power to cure them. However, when mutants are captured by the Maborg, they're going to be turned into Stido for them to be used as pawns. There are two methods a pseudo can be brought into existence. One is by traditional blood cloning, the most advanced water skill in existence, and the and that was only done by an oracle construct that was named Nephthys. The other is by a special form of concoction by Maborg, injecting into humans, instantly turn them into pseudo. After being created or injected into people, their common forms a resemble misbegotten humanoids and most are incapable of actual language, meaning they usually grunt or just make sounds. Their purpose is to simply follow the orders of their masters and nothing more. And for pseudo who are extracted from or injected into people with special abilities, somehow retain their human form, can talk, think, and are indistinguishable from any other person. Strangely, these human pseudo, for instance, the two you fall the mind, have powers that rival JSA's abilities. Those pseudo are far less common than the other pseudo that are used as minions. I should also add something else, replied Pass. It's also possible for lesser pseudo to gain human forms too. Really? How so? replied Nathaniel. A while back there was a shutdown of the Wilcox Corporation on TV, replied Pass. Some of the victims had the blood drained from their bodies. Consuming human blood grants the pseudo a complete human form, which makes them strong pseudo. Really? Are they like vampires? They all explain. It's not just that, there's more, as continued to explain. Online they have online they once had a website called the Chosen List, and they say it's a taboo for uh, pseudo to absorb the shards of other pseudo as it means to get stronger. What's the risk that they do, I suggested? Like strong pseudo, they still take human forms by a pass. However, they go completely insane with unimaginable power and become dark pseudo. This only seems to happen within Pseudo, whereas people can absorb their stars indefinitely because their powers are only temporary for humans. Thankfully, no Dark Pseudo has ever existed because we share a problem with one did. As everyone else continues to talk about Pseudo and what happened in the cave, Nathaniel sits and punishes to himself. I'm glad the kids are safe, thought Nathaniel. But if I had known they were up against the board this earlier on, I would have sent senior members along with them. Still, it's an impressive feat for them to defeat this many pseudo as low ranking as they are. Hey dad, is something is something wrong? asked Dante. Is there anything on your mind? Oh nothing, Dante replied Nathaniel. Just time for staying up from four in the morning up till now. Man, staying up from four AM reminds me of pre drill, reminiscence Bruce. No more band stories, replies Aaron. Well, everyone, thanks for retrieving the emerald from the cave, announces Nathaniel. As a reward, I'm giving you all the rest of the week off. Everyone in the room claps and celebrates. You're going to need this uh, week to study for midterms, clarifies Pat. After hearing the word midterm, there was a dark silence throughout the entire room. Come on, Law, help us out, please, explained um, Ed. Hey, don't think because we're in the same room means you're exempt from taking my test, replied Pat. This is stressful for me because I have to stay up all night grading paper. As everyone leaves to their destination, Nathaniel takes the emerald uh, and heads to his quarters. He 
also tells the other employees that he's going to be busy for a while. Also tells them that to make sure no one enters uh, his area until he is finished. While this is happening, Flint stares in the shadows, laughing to himself and plotting. <laughs> it's just as you said, Master. They don't suspect a thing, said Flint on, on his walkie talkie. Good work, Flint, replied the voice on the walkie talkie. You found out where they're keeping the emerald. Now it's time to head back. Whoa, are you sure? asked Flint. I can get the emerald right now. It only takes a minute. In due time, perhaps, but not now, replied the voice. Besides, I received word that. Yeah, one of our top members has been eliminated by uh, JSA. We should fall back for now. What? Who? Exclaimed, um, Flint. Obviously, you're not gonna like the answer, but it's no well in Klaus, replied the voice. Those pretentious little, muttered Flint. That's enough, exclaimed the voice. Save all covets and opinions for later. Fine, okay, I'll head back, exclaimed Flint. Elsewhere in the deep forest of the woods lies an underground secret hideout where uh, the Mavor dwells. So you're telling me a mere group of children took out basically two of my top men, exclaimed the Mavor leader. But Lord, this is the Lord Mavor, sir. This is no fairy tale, exclaimed the CEO. Those kids actually had the super powers of skills like we've never seen before. There was even this one girl who emitted a, bu a blue aura that wiped out Noel and most of our group. A blue aura? You mean like silhouette? Asked the leader. Yes, sir, exactly, replied the pseudo. Even Klaus's uh, pseudo were destroyed, and he himself had to just escape along with just his head. On the subject of Klaus, how's he coming up in the research laboratory? asked the board leader. Unfortunately, sir, his old body it was there to grand repair, replied the samurai pseudo. However, the however the Oracle pseudo are giving him a stronger, faster, more powerful form as we speak. That's good, because I was getting really sick of his hideous face. Did I say that out loud? Said a new, um, said a new voice in the corner of the room. What do you want now, Flint? Said the leader. Now, do you really think that's polite? He replied. Being an old friend like that, colleagues, don't forget, we're the ones doing you a favor. You can keep your favorites, replied colleague. All I want to know is where the emerald is located inside JSA's facility. As I said earlier, it's located in a vault on the fifth floor, down the right hallway, down the right hallway, near the VIP office pipeline. Okay, now that you know it's in a vault, what's the code to the vault? Asked Kali. Uh, well, uh, muttered Flint. See, this is why I told you to fall back. Kali replied. Instead of waiting to call in after you got the password, you waited until the commissioner left. And just to tell me it's a random vault on the field floor of a building, well at least the information you gave us will, will help us slightly. Uh, so what are we going to do now, asked everyone in the room. Simple, Nethys and I are going to play this tone just a little bit longer, and I'm going to make sure Nathaniel opens that vault. And Flint. When he does open the vault, you better not be, you better be there to get the password from him. I mean it. Soon afterward, Silway enters the room reporting back to Khalid Maborik. Hey, I just finished taking care of that other guy, says Silhouette. Who's next on the list? Silhouette, there seems to be another who possesses your skills and abilities in JSA, replied Khalid. Really? Who is it? I don't know, he replied. But they say it's a girl from their group that may be kin to you. I'd like you I'd like for you to test her out with pleasure, replied Silhouette. How good is she? Well, she was strong enough to use the Azor Aura you possess, replied Kali. And was strong enough to, uh, to take out Noel and her group. Is that so, replied Silhouette? You just say the word and I'll dispose of her in seconds. That won't be necessary. Just see what she's all about first, replied Kali. Meanwhile, that night, the group prepares to get ready for exams. Christine tries to make brain food for her roommates at the dorm, and it did not go as planned. Uh, later, the girls and I spend the rest of the night studying while Ed tries to brainstorm ways to cheat by like writing his hand, writing little sticky notes, taking pictures on his camera phone. At the house, Justin studies as well as his computer as an aide to help him out with his studying. 
Air stays on his, his own little route. Bruce is up all night on the phone because he has no exams and he's in college. He hasn't taken exams yet. After days and nights of studying, uh, the group finds out that Justin and Aaron have two exams. I Justin and Aaron have one. Ed has to take all exams, so his free time was shot. After the great exams ended, the school posted everyone's grades in the hallway. It turns out Christine got the highest score in the school. Everyone besides Ed uh, scored pretty good in the exams. During that, during that week, Nathaniel went to attend a meeting in Washington, D.C. to discuss the uprising of the war, stating that they, they, they are acting more and more aggressively by the minute. Various leaders from everywhere were discussing different ways to approach and defeat the board before they grew even larger and more dangerous than ever before. As expected, compromise led to arguing, which led to which led to more and more voices being raised. Then someone told Nathaniel that he should just disband Jason units because they'll get slaughtered by the board. Then they asked him if he even knew what he was doing, training youth to fight when they should be in school. Nathaniel corrected this by saying, one, if you knew anything about Jason, you know those kids are the first to attend school and make high grades. Uh, this is basically an extra extracurricular activity for them. Two, yes I do know what I'm doing. And three, mind your own freaking business. The arguments led to more arguments, which eventually led to a fight. Nathaniel left the place stating this whole meeting, if you could call it that, was a waste of time. That Friday after school, the group returns to school stating how uh, relieved they are now that exams are over. Hey, this is Thanksgiving holiday starting next week. Ask uh, uh, Christine. Yeah, now that you mention it, we got the whole week out this time for flying. Like, Woohoo! We do? It's time. Explained Ed. Looks like somebody needs time off after a great after a great a certain person got on their exams applied rating. Hey hey hey! It replied Ed. I'm just joking Ed. It's your fly. The, so does anyone have any plans for, the, for these next few days off? Asked for a Raven. Besides resting video games and eating turkey with the family, nothing much. Replied Justin. Oh, I have a game coming uh, next week against the Falcons. So. Yeah, can you all come to it uh, instead here? Definitely. They all replied. Uh, every, uh, everyone else. Christine's cell phone vibrates and it shows a message from Gina. It states that Nathaniel wants to have a brief meeting with the JC members ASAP, and it won't take any more than 15 minutes. Afterwards, the team headed to the to base to report the Nathaniel's mandatory meeting. They walked into the main office to ask the secretary where Nathaniel was. However, he was already on the phone talking to somebody else. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Buy the mail sex here. I'll have I have the rest of the money uh by the end of February, okay? Alright, thanks. Bye. He was talking on the phone. Hey guys, my name is Nick. What can I do you for? He asked. He, um yeah, replied Justin. Do you know where the commissioner and the boy named Mike is? Let's see here. Yeah. Replied Nick. Um, they're on the basement floor in the computer room, replied Isa as she walked in. Okay, thanks, Isa, replied Justin. Is there anything we can do? No, we're good. Uh, thanks. Uh, replied Aaron, replied. Okay, see you all later, uh, Nick explained as the group left the office to head to the base floor. Uh, soon afterwards, they all report downstairs as distracted. Nathaniel comes out of the room saying, Before we get started, can I speak? With Raven and Christine for a few minutes. The girls then went back uh, in the room while Nathaniel told them uh, the information that they requested. When they were finished, it took 30 to 45 minutes when they got out. But for some reason, the looks on their faces were different as they heard some very important news. Later, um, Nathaniel returned stating that he had to discuss something important uh, with them and apologize for the wait. Anyways, let's get started, said Nathaniel. First, I'd like to address the, that the Mavoric have been making numerous appearances recently since our last mission in the mine. We're seeing on the news that they grow more and more violent by the minute. So, it brings me to great concern to inform you all to stay safe, which is why I created Safeguard Belts. Safeguard Belts, replied everyone else in the room. That's right. 
You see, these little lifesavers look or, look like ordinary belts, but when activated, they have the tendency to protect the rare from one, one time from certain death. Get serious, survivors. That's right. Especially activate. It's basically activated the moment you're engaged in battle, because you never know when or how the enemy will make their move. Replied Nathaniel. I I honestly can't tell you how to use these, but I can assure you that it's the best use when it comes to when it's absolutely necessary. If you think to take your opponent without activating it, then don't. Uh, but if you can, if you think there is no other way to defeat an opponent, an extremely powerful enemy without a second chance, then by all means activate it immediately. That's a great um, invention, but we'll explain what happens when we activate it, replied Jester. Good point, exclaimed Nathaniel. When activated, it can it can form an impenetrable uh, force field from bullets, or say if you were badly injured from an explosion or neutralized, it can even stand out, even stand out a beam of light that can simultaneously hear your injuries. Oh, and also, if you were poisoned by an unknown chemical, virus, or venom, the belt comes with an omni penicillin that literally cures everything and completely heals the wounds in, in a few milliseconds. Dude, do you even know how many lives you could be saving with this belt? You should get a pat, you should patent this and get millions of pine head. I already tried, but it didn't work, Pine Nathaniel. They said if I got it up uh, and patent it, it'll cause other medical or, or pharmaceutical uh, companies to shut down. It would greatly jeopardize them from making any money. Look at look at it in a business point of view. Even nowadays we make money and to look out for our fellow man. Due to that logic, these belts standing before you now are the only belts in existence. No one else in the world has these but you all. So please take good care of them, and don't use them unless it's absolutely necessary, as I said earlier. So, this concludes our brief meeting. I just wanted to present these state guard belts uh, to you all, and to warn uh, to you to warn you all of the Mavoric uprising. Oh, and not to ruin your week off, but we received word from people in the country. They said they've seen reoccurring ish the appearances of a Grim Reaper. Claim that he reaps the souls of evildoers in this world, and they want us to investigate. Strange stuff always happens out there in the woods, replies Aaron. The weird thing is that whenever we fight these things, do you notice they they poof away when you defeat them? That you're saying that this Grim Reaper uh, thing might like, like might disappear once we beat it? Is that it? Asked Ike. Seriously, watch what I tell you, replied Aaron. It's, it was the same thing for that Houdini guy and that werewolf thing th too. Yeah, you got a point out of Christine. Those things do seem to vanish as soon as uh, we finish them off. Since it's Friday, uh, and we got the whole week uh, next off, and, no, sorry. And we got the whole week off next week, sure. I don't want, I want to see what Aaron's talking about coming in, Justin. Okay, this has been the eighth chapter titled, uh, the uh, aftermath. The next uh, chapter, episode now, will be titled The Azor Clan. Like always, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for listening.